All right, so look, you've got on uh, the north border of the United States, um, the border that shares with Canada in 1812, you're going to have um, the beginning of an offensive campaign by the Americans, uh, which will be um, <clears throat> sort of three different campaign routes they're going to take. One from Fort Detroit, one from Niagara, and one from Albany, which is going to aim at Montreal. Now, all these are going to be attempted in the summer and the autumn of 1812, and all of them are going to be terrible failures, all right? In the far west, what was the Northwest Territory or the Michigan Territory, from Detroit, William Hall, uh, Hull was commanding a group of Ohio militiamen, right? And um, <clears throat> he was his plan was to move south, hit the Canadian border, and attack the British fort of Malden, okay? Well, he moves south, and the Ohio militiamen say, look, we don't want to cross into territory outside of the United States because we were defensive. Um, unit and it's not our job to go on an offensive outside of american borders okay this disobedience of the militia is going to be a major theme here in the summer and autumn of 1812 that's going to prevent the americans from achieving much um <clears throat> in terms of uh, their military objectives uh, against uh, the canadians okay uh if you move to the um <clears throat> eastern side of this northern border, okay, um, <clears throat> the man who was responsible for um, organizing an offense on the eastern side of the northern border was a um, <clears throat> fellow named Dearborn. And Dearborn was a customs collector in Boston, and he was making money off of it, and he didn't want to leave Boston, okay? But really, he doesn't really do anything for a few months. He's recruiting some men. He's building coastal defenses in Boston. But he's not uh, moving against the Canadian border, uh, as many are expecting him to do. Okay? So, in <clears throat> kind of incompetent leadership, that's going to be another problem here for the Americans uh, in this northern uh, theater of the war. Okay? And uh, meanwhile, while everyone's waiting for Dearborn to act, the governor of New York hires this guy, um, <clears throat> Rensselaer, to attack the British uh, Canadians from Niagara. Okay? And he moves into Canada and suffers a terrible defeat at Queenstown. Big disaster. That was October of 1812. The following month, November, Dearborn finally acts. He moves from Albany up towards the Canadian border. His objective is Montreal. And when he gets to the Canadian border, boom, the militiamen of New York say we're not going into enemy territory into Canada. They do the same thing the Ohio militia did. They disobey him. So again, the reasons for failure in uh, on the northern theater of the War of 1812 were because of a disobedience in the militia and incompetence in the leadership. Okay? Um, <clears throat> now, the losses especially in the Northwest Territory, are offset in the following year of 1813 by a victory in Lake Erie, okay? A um, <clears throat> group of about nine American merchant ships engages the British fleet in Lake Erie and defeats them. And it's very significant because the British realize without a fleet in Lake Erie, um, there's no way they can defend and the and Northwest Territory, the Michigan Territory, and keep it supplied. So they withdraw back into Canada, and the United States regains control of Detroit, which had been lost by Hull in 1812. So this one naval victory turns the tide back in terms of um, <clears throat> an American advantage in 1813.